says, if you first have a willing mind, that's accepted with God. Uh-huh. Bless you, brother. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just go ahead and get into the scriptures. Many people have heard sinners in the world say that they justify their lives by saying that they were made in God's image. They justify the way they're living and by saying God made me in his image. Well, we can read a couple of scriptures on that today. If you want to go to Genesis chapter 1. Anybody can read it when they get it. With the moon took he counsel, and who instructed him, and taught him in his path of judgment, and taught him knowledge, and showed to him the way of understanding. I'm sorry, Brother Johnny, did I tell you wrong? Chapter 40, verse 18. To whom will ye like God? For what likeness will you compare unto him? Well, that's what the world's doing now. They're, they're comparing their likeness to God's, living in sin, and we know that's not true. Correct. That's a question asked by Isaiah. Who will you liken God? Or what likeness will you compare to him? Okay, can you go to a Leviticus chapter 11, verse 44? Like I said, anybody can read it. shall therefore sanctify yourselves and ye shall be holy for I am holy neither shall ye defile yourself with any manner of creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth God said he is holy that is his likeness he's holy All right, can you go to Psalms chapter 116 and verse 5 
Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Yea, our God is merciful. Our Lord is righteous. That's his image. Yes. Okay, Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 4. judgment, the God of truth and not iniquity, iniquity, sorry, just and right as he. Okay, 32 and verse 4 said, let me get it again. Wow. He said his work is perfect, for all his ways are judgment, a God of truth, and without iniquity, just and right as he. God is without iniquity. That is his image. Okay, Matthew chapter 5 and verse 48. Be ye there perfect, therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Our God is perfect. Amen. The Bible said he he was in this world, but he you know he did not have sin. Right. He was without sin. Yes. So that was the likeness of God. He walked this earth without sin. Right. Okay. Genesis chapter one. Genesis. Chapter one, verse thirty one. Everybody have that? All right. God, let's slow down a little bit and get the get the pages. All right. He said it's very good. God saw everything that He made, and behold, it is very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. God made everything very good. There was no evil in it. I'm sorry? That's his image. Okay, go to Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 29. Brother Seth, yes, we, we talked about this study last night. And when he created Adam, and said he created him good and very good in the image of God. He was perfect, but he was naked. And that's the thing today. That's how God wants us to come before him without, any, without anything covering us or hiding anything. An open book pouring our, how to, our heart out to him. He said his strength is made perfect in our weakness. You we know what? Go ahead, brother. I'm sorry. You're right. That's, all That's right. how I felt when I got up here. I feel like I don't have nothing to offer. But, you know, I'm, I'm up here standing in my weakness. But being up here, God's strength is made perfect. That's right. You're right. Thank you. All right. Did we get Ecclesiastes 7 and verse uh, 29? Somebody can read it if they have it. Well, I love this song we have. I found it. That God has made man upright, but they have sought out many inventions. God made man upright from the very beginning, but they sought out many inventions. It's they're, they're the ones who changed the image of God. Adam changed the image of God and Eve. That's right. And now we are in that image today. We are not in here, but when we're in the world, we are in that image. Yes. Okay. Go to Ezekiel chapter 28. Ezekiel 
Chapter 28, verses 12 through 15. I'll go ahead and read these. He said, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sellest up the son, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Very precious stone was thy covering the sardis, the topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth cherub, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in, the, in thy ways from the day that thou wast created, till iniquity was found in thee. The devil himself was made perfect until iniquity was found in him. The Bible said he walked in the Eden of God in the creation. Okay. I got a question for you. How how many when you was teenagers come to the point where you thought you was more knowledgeable than mom and dad? Or have dealt with a kid that thought that they was more knowledgeable than you? They was wiser than mom and dad. Just want you to think about it. You know, when we uh when we lived in our parents' house, we had, when we were younger, we had no bills, we had no car payments, house payments, utilities, we could eat anything we wanted in the house. God told Adam and Eve that you may eat of every tree in the garden. You, you must eat freely, except the knowledge of good and evil. Mm -hmm. And they come to the point where they knew more than God. And God said, you can't stay here no more. Yeah, we had no worries. We had no worries at all. They had no worries. Do you think they were thankful for what God gave them? They were not thankful for what God gave them because they wanted more. He gave them everything they needed in the garden. But they were not thankful. All right, can you go to Genesis chapter 3? Wait till everybody gets there and somebody read 2 through 6. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden. But the fruit of the tree which, which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that the day ye eat thereof, your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as God, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to her eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit, therefore, and did eat. The Bible says that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be, to be desired to make one wise. Remember that word wise. Just keep that in your mind. I right, go to Romans chapter 1. We're going to read 
read verses 20 through 23. I'll read them. It says, For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. We've been talking about the creation. Mm -hmm. Being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. God plainly told them that, you know, a lot of people see this as false prophets, which it does talk about false prophets, but just listen for one second, please. He said, from the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Do you believe Adam and Eve had an excuse for what they did? God plainly told him, you can't eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You can eat of everything in the garden for freely, but not that tree. And they still done it. They were without excuse. Mm -hmm. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful. Adam and Eve was not thankful in the garden for what they had, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. What did Eve say that the tree was it's desired to make one wise, right? Um, All right, verse 22. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Yeah, yeah. Right. That's good. And changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like the corruptible man. That's good. God is uncorruptible. Adam and Eve, he made them uncorruptible. But when they did... He, he made them perfect, but once they took hold of it, it made all of us corruptible. Mm -hmm. All of us are corruptible. Even living for God, we are still corruptible. But God is uncorruptible. They changed the glory of the uncorruptible, uncorruptible God into an image made like the corruptible man. Okay. They sinned in the garden. The Bible says that your iniquity have separated you from your God. That's exactly what happened in the garden. Okay, can you go to Romans chapter 5? verse 19. Anybody can read it. Just one verse. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. For by one man's disobedience many were made sinners. By They were made sinners. God made them perfect. But after he sinned in the garden, many were made sinners. Until the law, sin was in the world. But sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. Death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similar similitude of Adam's transgression. You know, Brother Paul said, Who, O oh wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this death, body of death? Uh-huh. Paul already knew the answer to that question. He asked a rhetorical question. He knew the answer to it. 
he can refer back to Isaiah where he said, Say to them that are of fearful heart, fear not. Um, be strong, your God will come with vengeance. Even God with the recompense, he shall come and save you. Uh -huh. He knew who it was that came and saved him. Mm -hmm. yes. He said that, call his name Jesus. He shall save their people from their sin. God made a way back. He, he made a way back to his image. He said, he said, a fountain was open to the house of David for sin and uncleanness. He made a way back to his image. We just need to live day by day. Drop the things we're doing. And everything we drop brings us closer to that image. Okay, can you go to Hebrews chapter 2? Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 through 18. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Wherefore in all things it behoved him that be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful priest and things pertaining to God to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. Yes. For that he himself had suffered being tempted, he is able to support them that are tempted. He says in verse 14 that uh, as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. The devil gained this power over death in the Garden of Eden. Uh -huh. And from Adam to Jesus, death reigned. Yes. And the Lord came and took those keys back. He, took, he said, now I have the keys of death, hell, and the grave. Amen. He took them back when he died for our sins, went down, yes. rose again, uh -huh. and come up victorious. Amen. Yes. Amen. Now we can have that victory through him. Okay, can you go to Romans 8? I want to read verse 3 if they can. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house and telling men and women committed them to prison. I'm sorry, Brother Chris, I'll tell you wrong. Okay. Romans 8, verse 3. Oh, they're sitting. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm in the wrong place. Eight and three. For what the law could not do, and that was weak through the flesh. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, and then sin in the flesh. Amen. You know, he said, for what the law could not do and that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. Uh -huh. He had to come down into that mess that Adam and Eve created. Right. Right. He came down in the likeness of sinful flesh. He created Adam and Eve in his image from the beginning. They destroyed it. He had to come down in the likeness of sinful flesh to destroy the works of the devil. Yeah. Yes. You know that verse that you read back in uh, Romans 5, verse 14, talking about after the similitude of Adam's transgression. The word similitude there in Greek means uh, in likeness. 
Does it really? Well, that's the word we're looking at, likeness. Thanks for sharing. All right. Um, go to Colossians chapter 3. Colossians 3, verses 5 through 10. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, you know, you know what the affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. For which things, say, the wrath of God come upon the children of disobedience. In that which ye also walk sometime when ye lived in these. But now ye also put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Amen. Amen. Verse uh, 8 says, But now you also put off all these, lay them down, anger, wrath, malice, Blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie, one, lie not one to another, seeing that, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. The more we put these things down, we're taking off that the image that the Adam and Eve created. Mm -hmm. And we're putting on more of God's image. Amen. Amen. Say it. Go ahead. It's in Corinthians, the seventh chapter. I'm not going to say Corinthians. It said, cleanse yourself from all filthiness of the flesh the spirit, not just the flesh but the spirit, yeah. affecting holiness and the fear of God and I've looked at this passage of scriptures these, these abominations up here, he says mortify these are from without but then when it gets down, in other words mortify them things are without, but these other things are from within when you come on down that's where you find uh, things in your heart, you know in your heart, like uh, Wrath. In other words, malice. All these things are like things that come from within. In other words, once you come to God, I don't. When I come to God, I'm not a drunkard anymore. I don't do drugs or I don't murder or steal, which all them things are without me know. But when I come to God, I found anger within. I found bitterness inside of me. Things I have to start have to work on. Yeah. So we we mortify things, and then we got to put off. All these things that's inside of our heart to make ourselves what God wants us to make. I've just seen that. It's all the same, but it's just like the work on the outside. People come to the Lord, they know they can't be a germ. Yes. But when you come in, sometimes once you come for God, you don't know that you've got bitterness or that you've got wrath or you've got malice until God manifest it in you, then you see it. Mm -hmm. Ain't you glad God's Spirit manifests that? Amen. 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 We don't see it in the court. You know, this is this is for God's people what we're talking about tonight. A sinner cannot change their image until they repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. For the of their sins. But after we come to God, then God can show us these things within and we can start laying them down. He, he said in Mark, he said, all these things come from within, adultery, drunkenness, uh, murders. All these things come from within, and they defile this man. Yeah. That comes from within. Yeah. Okay. Um, read verse, um, I want you to see something in verse 10 one more time. He said, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge. After the image of him that created him. Amen. Knowledge of what? How do we get that knowledge? The word of God. So it's ongoing? I believe it's ongoing till the day we die. You know, Job said, if I said I was perfect, if I say I'm perfect, my, my own lips will condemn me. Yeah. He said, though I were perfect, I wouldn't know. That's in Job chapter 9. I'm misquoting it, but it's in there if you want to read it. God's not going to let someone know that they're perfect on this in this earth. But I believe you can reach per 
perfectness, charity before you die. But I believe it's an ongoing process until the day you die. We're always laying something down. Okay, I'm going to read it one more time. Renewed in the knowledge of after the image of him that created him. That's what he's saying. We can get back to that image of him that created us through the knowledge of the word of God. We're in some good ways. Way. All right, can you go to Romans chapter 8? Chapter 8, 28, and verse 29. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. For him for whom he did foreknow, he also did. Mm. He said we can be conformed back to the image of his son, the word. We can be conformed. We have to be conformed back to that image. Chapter 12 says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. But be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Right, uh, Sister Vicki Hay has said it many times. I've heard it over the past year. She talks about silver being, how do they, how do they heat silver, Sister Vicki? How do they heat? How do they heat silver? How do they heat silver? How do they heat heat? Silver, stirring the silver. Oh, the solder pot. Solder pot. Well, you put silver in a pot and then you put the heat to it. It might look pretty at first. It might look like you can see your image very well. But once you put the heat to it, dross starts coming to the top. And when the dross comes to the top. You can't see your image in that very well. But that is what we got to drag. That's when God can drag that dross off the top. And then we can. he can see his image when he looks down in, into our life. He can see his image in our life. Okay. Uh, can you go up? Can you go to Proverbs 27 and verse 19? You know, this Bible is a mirror that we look into. Proverbs 27 and verse 19. James chapter 1, verse 22 through 25. I'll go ahead and read these two. 22 through 25. 
22 through 25. He said, But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deeds. Verse 23 and 24 says again, For if any be a hearer of the word, not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. They use a glass to see their image, their reflection. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. So if we want to change back into God's image, we have to be a doer of the word. Whatever God tells us to do in here, we, that's how we get changed back into his image. We have to be a doer. You know, I, I talked to a backslider a few days ago, and I told him I was worried about him. And he said, uh, he said, I haven't given up on God. I, I still believe in God. And I told him, I said, faith without works is dead. Right. You can have faith in God all you want, but if you're not having the actions, you don't have the works. Right. It's dead. Right. We have to be a doer of God's word, not just a hearer only. All right, 2 Corinthians 3 and 18. Let everybody get it. Second Corinthians 3, I'll start at 17. Said, Now the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. I'm going to. Said, Now the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we are with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord. When we're looking in this, in this book, we see the glory of the Lord. We're, we're seeing God's image in his word. He said, are changed into the same image from glory to glory. Even as by the spirit of the Lord. Everything we put down, one thing after another, we're changed from glory to glory. God sees every bit of it. We're changed back into his image. True life, John, more and more. Yes. If you're looking, like you said, if you go into your home or if you go into the bathroom at night and you have a nightlight and you look into the mirror, it's kind of dim in there. You don't, you can't see your reflection very well. But if you turn the light on, you can see your reflection. You can see all your flaws. You can see everything that you need to change. All right, can you go to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13? We're looking in it. We're looking in the mirror under a dim light right now. All the light we know, and we can change in what we know. We're required. We are required for what we know. 1 Corinthians 13. Uh, I'll read this too. It's verse 9. We don't see the full light of God yet. We can't see his image in our life fully yet. Sure. But we can see simple things day by day. He said, For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. Sure. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. <sighs> I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, 
but they shall I know, even as also I am known. And now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. Yes. Uh, the Bible says that charity is the bond of perfectness, is that what it says? No, we look, we're looking through a glass darkly. We're looking at it darkly, but when that light shines more, we can lay down more, and we can turn into his image yes. more every yes. day. Right. He said, for now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know, even also, as I am known. Yes. Right, can you go to First John 3? What did you say? First John chapter three. <laughs> Verses two and three. He said, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure. That is God's image. He is pure. The more we lay down, the more we can turn and go back to his image that he wants us to be in. You know, David said, I'll, I'll be satisfied when I awake in his likeness, in God's likeness. Yeah. All right, can you go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4? Verse 2 Corinthians chapter 4. I don't have it wrote down here. Verses 10 and 11. He said, We are always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our, in our body. You know, he said, he shall even quicken our mortal body. Yeah. Yeah. We can we can be turned into his image, even in this mortal body that we're living, just the way we walk. If we walk yeah. holy life, if we if we live a holy life, we are making our way back to his image. Verse uh, eleven said, "For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh." And we can only do that through the knowledge of the Word of God. That's all I have, brother.